In 2021, geneticists uncovered something shocking about Lithuanians. For decades, history books grouped them with Slavs. But their DNA, it tells a completely different story. Today, you'll discover how one nation preserved bloodlines from before farming even existed. Through Ice Age hunters, steppe warriors, Siberian genes, and a language older than Rome itself. And why science kept this hidden for so long. When scientists sequenced Lithuanian genomes in 2019, they expected typical European DNA. Instead, they found Ice Age blood. Here's what shocked them. Lithuanians carry 88 100% Western hunter-gatherer ancestry, the same DNA found in 10,000-year-old skeletons pulled from frozen forests. While the rest of Europe was transformed by waves of farmers, warriors, and empires, Lithuania stood still. Autosomal studies confirmed. Lithuanians diverged from other Eastern Europeans 12,800 years ago, before the Slavic identity even existed. This isn't genetic drift. This is a preserved time capsule. But here's the question that haunted researchers. If Lithuanians aren't Slavic, then who are they? To find out, we go back to 11,000 BCE. The glaciers had just melted. Europe was still scarred by ice. And in the dark forests of the Eastern Baltic, humans moved in. The Kunda and Nava cultures, the first settlers of Lithuania. In their skeletal remains, scientists found something unprecedented. Pure Ice Age blood. No Anatolian farmer DNA. No mixing. Nothing. Their maternal lineages, haplogroups U5, U4, H, match Paleolithic hunters who once tracked mammoths across frozen plains. These weren't wanderers. They were keepers. They survived glacial storms, volcanic winters, the collapse of megafauna, and never left the woods they first walked into. Even when the Neolithic farming revolution swept Europe after 6000 BCE, it barely touched Lithuania. Why? The land itself was a fortress. Swamps, dense forests, ice-fed rivers. Nature built the perfect wall. But that isolation wouldn't last forever, because by 3000 BCE, horsemen from the steppe were riding toward the Baltic, carrying bronze, new languages, and a genetic revolution. Around 3000 BCE, they came fast. Men from the Pontic Caspian steppe, the Yamnaya culture, nomads, herders, warriors. They brought domesticated horses, bronze tools, and the R1A haplogroup, one of the most dominant paternal lineages in European history. Today, 35-45% of Lithuanian men carry R1A Z280, a genetic signature from these steppe riders. But here's the paradox. The native hunter-gatherers didn't disappear. Their genes survived through the maternal line, U5B, U4, H. The warriors didn't conquer. They merged. They married local women. They farmed Baltic soil. And in that fusion, the first true Baltic identity was born. A 2018 study by Mitnick proved it. Baltic Bronze Age individuals already clustered genetically with modern Lithuanians. Meaning? The core of who Lithuanians are today was forming 3,000 years ago. But the steppe riders weren't the last to arrive, because centuries later, a second paternal lineage crept in. Not from the south, but from the frozen east. Around 500 BCE, something quiet happened. A second Y-DNA signature appeared in the Baltic gene pool, haplogroup N1C. It didn't arrive with war. It slipped in through frozen trade routes, carried by Finno-Ugric peoples from the Urals. Today, 30-40% of Lithuanian men carry this Siberian marker, a pairing found nowhere else but in Baltic and Finnic populations, not in Slavs, not in Germans, only here. Unlike the violent steppe invasions, N1C's arrival was gentle. A slow-moving tide, blending into the existing population without disrupting it. Imagine that a second father line from forests so cold they cracked stone. And while the fathers changed, the mothers held the line. While paternal bloodlines shifted with time, the maternal line didn't. In modern Lithuanian women, we find mtDNA haplogroups, H, U5B, K, J, T, ancient signatures passed only from mother to child. U5B stands apart. It's one of the oldest genetic lineages in Europe, 
dating back over 7,000 years to Mesolithic hunters. Even in corded ware graves from 3260-2630 BCE, archaeologists found haplogroup W6A, a maternal line linking Bronze Age women directly to modern Lithuanians. Even as empires rose and steppe warriors brought new fathers, the mothers stayed rooted to the soil. Their DNA shows almost no outside influence. A 2019 study confirmed Lithuanian maternal ancestry remained remarkably stable. No war could erase them. No language could silence them. Because women carried more than life, they carried memory. And that memory lived not just in genes, but in sound. The Lithuanian language is no ordinary language. By consensus among linguists, it's the most archaic of all living Indo-European tongues. Antoine Mele, a 19th century linguist, said it plainly. Anyone wishing to hear how Indo-Europeans spoke should come and listen to a Lithuanian peasant. Lithuanian has retained seven noun cases. Dual number complex verbal moods. Free pitch accentation. Features lost in almost every modern Indo-European language. It's not mutually intelligible with Polish or Russian. It resisted both Cyrillic and Western scripts for centuries. In the middle of empires, wars, translations, the Lithuanian tongue refused to bend. But here's the strange part. For centuries, Lithuania's rulers didn't even speak Lithuanian. In the 13th century, the Grand Duchy of Lithuania became the largest country in Europe. But behind its walls, the elite spoke Chancery Ruthenian, a Slavic language. Later, Polish took over. The laws, the courts, the documents, all in Slavic languages. So does that make Lithuanian Slavic? No, because genetics reveals a striking truth. Despite centuries of Polonization, Baltic male lineages remained unchanged. Noble families embraced Slavic for prestige. But in the villages, rural Lithuanians clung to their tongue, traditions, blood, no genetic turnover on the scale seen in Poland or the Balkans, where over 80% of paternal DNA was replaced. It was a kingdom with a double mask, speaking one language, but inheriting another. And that mask fooled historians for centuries. But here's the twist that rewrites Eastern European history. Deep inside modern Russians, Belarusians, Ukrainians, there's a forgotten voice. Haplogroup N1C, the same Siberian Baltic marker found in Lithuanians flows through the veins of men who speak Slavic but descend from Baltic bloodlines. Modern genetics confirms in northern forested zones, Slavic expansion didn't replace the Balts. It absorbed them. The East Slavs married them, merged with them, inherited their genetic legacy. But in West Slavs, Poles, Czechs, or South Slavs, Serbs, Croats, N1C is nearly absent. This tells us something profound. Slavic identity wasn't a genetic migration. It was a linguistic revolution. And in many places, it rolled over older civilizations without removing them. That's why Lithuanian DNA is a genetic fossil, a map of pre-Slavic Europe preserved through isolation and memory. For centuries, a comfortable lie wrapped Lithuania in disguise. Of course, they're Slavic. But DNA breaks the myth wide open. Even at the peak of Slavicization, between the 14th and 18th centuries, Lithuanians held the line, not with swords, with blood. Studies by Ernakite, 2021, Lazaridis, 2023, Gretzinger, 2024, confirm Lithuanian genetic profiles remained uniquely Baltic, even while neighbors like Poland experienced up to 80% population turnover. The Baltic Y-DNA stayed strong. The maternal lines, untouched. So here we are. Slavic language borders on the map, but Baltic DNA rooted in the soil. That's not a contradiction. That's the scar left by a lie. But there's one mystery left. Between 500 and 800 CE, something strange happened. Lithuania switched to cremation. Fire consumed not just bodies, but genetic history. Without human remains, archaeogeneticists struggle to reconstruct that era the bridge from the Baltic Iron Age into the medieval world. Yet clues survive. Modern Lithuanians carry traits science can't fully explain. Higher red hair alleles, 10 to 12% Neanderthal-derived gene flow, unique immune, metabolic, and skin adaptations. 
Researchers are now turning to tooth enamel, petrous bones, microscopic bone fragments, reservoirs where DNA can survive heat and decay. Even ashes can whisper back, if you listen closely. So what have we learned? Lithuanians aren't Slavic, they're not Germanic, they're not even Scandinavian. They're a living time capsule carrying Ice Age blood, steppe warrior genes, Siberian fathers, and a language older than Rome itself. While empires rose and fell, while languages were rewritten and borders redrawn, Lithuania stood still. And their DNA? It's the last remaining echo of a Europe we thought was lost forever. If this blew your mind, drop a comment with your ancestry. I want to know what your DNA says about you. And if you want more Hidden History Science Just Revealed, hit subscribe. Because next time, we're uncovering why Icelandic DNA is completely different from the rest of Scandinavia and what that means for Viking history. See you then!